way to God. And this is a portion of a scripture. And why is this so important that we feel our way to God? It's because very often in life we are guided by our feelings. Come on, how many of you have a good feeling about something and a bad feeling about something else? You go to buy a house and you visit different houses and the real estate agent is there with you and he's showing, a, showing you a house. It seems to be a pretty good deal uh, and it's in, in a good location, but there's something there. You have like a gut feeling. There's something that tells you, uh -uh, this is not the house for me. Or, you know, in a more extreme situation of relationships, maybe you remember when you were dating and uh, you were dating this, this uh, handsome young fellow or this gorgeous, uh, beautiful woman, but at the point you felt, no, this is not the person for me. So uh, many times we are guided not by reasoning, but we are guided by feelings. Some people take this uh, kind of thinking to an extreme and, uh, and they say, well, just follow your heart, just follow your heart. Well, it's a big mistake. You know, the Bible says that our heart uh, it deceives us, so we cannot just follow our heart. But uh, when we have the presence of God in our lives, we can add our feeling to the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in us. And when we add, you know, our own feeling to the relationship, a personal relationship with God, the Holy Spirit will just magnify our feelings so we'll be able to make the right decisions. But so many people today, they are lost in this world and they, they don't even believe that God exists. And, and certain times we search inside. And it's so important that we understand that, that, that feelings will take us also in the right direction. Now, this, our world was, was touched by God's finger. And, um, you know, I, I put that picture there uh, uh, that, that, that shows a, an image when Jesus wrote with the finger on the sand as they brought a sinful woman to him and and he wrote in the sand and he asked he who is without sin cast the first stone because they wanted to stone that woman because of adultery and and jesus just touched the, the sand and he wrote something and uh, there's many arguments about what he was writing and we're not going to talk about this today but let me tell you that god's finger touched our world and God wants to touch our life because he wants to reveal himself to each one of us individually. Now in Acts chapter 17 verses 26-27, Paul had the opportunity to share the gospel with uh, um, some very important people in, in Greece. And I'm going to read these, uh, these verses to you. And he was explaining who God is and he said, and he made, God made, from one man every nation of mankind to live on on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place let me just pause here so God determined where we should live and when we should live so he allotted specific seasons or times and geographical places so if you're here in Montreal it's because God placed you here. And you might say, no, I'm here by accident. I'm here by mistake. I'm here because I was born here. I'm here by coincidence. Let me tell you that God predetermined where you should live and the amount of time you should live. And then he continues saying that they should seek God. So God did, did this, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him so uh, can you repeat after me feel the way, feel the way. toward him toward and find him. And find him so why did God do things the way they are because he wants he wants us to feel our our way in his direction and perhaps find him now many of you here you already found God and it's one of the reasons you are here because you found God and you want to be in fellowship with likewise people, people with the same interest that also found God. But maybe you came here, you don't know really why you came here or why you're watching this uh, uh, YouTube video, but you, you're just watching or you just came here because someone 
you know, told you, oh, let's go to this movie theater, let's see, you know, there's this place, it's a church in a movie theater, let's go and check it. And you came, you know, maybe by accident, but let me tell you, you're not here by accident. You're here because God wants you to feel your way to Him. So, uh, it, it says also, and Paul continued to say, yet He's actually not far from each one of us. Now, I don't know how many of you, when you were kids, played the, the hot and cold game. You know, uh, someone would uh, hide um, an object in the, in the house, and uh, the object is hiding, and then uh, you tell, okay, go try to, to find the object. And the, and the child goes around the house, and you say, cold, 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 as they, they're looking at, you know, under the sofa, and cold, cold, cold. And then you, you start to say, oh, it's warm, hot, hot, hot. And you guide the child through the, the, these two wor words, hot and cold in order to find something. So, so they, they get some cues, some clues, uh, you know, uh, how far or, or, or how close they are from the hidden object. Anyone played this or just myself? Okay, some of you, if you never played this, this is a good game to play with kids because it will help them, you know, to be sensitive to instruction. Now, we're not little kids anymore, but through life, in our life, we will have things that will happen in our life, sometimes pleasant things, sometimes unpleasant things, that will lead us in the direction that God wants us to be or to go. Because ultimately, the goal of God is that we find Him. And it's not that God is playing games with us or having fun with us, but in order to find our way to Him, He will place some road marks. He will uh, place some people in our life that will give us a sense of direction. So each one of us will find God in a very specific way, in a very unique way. You know, I've heard people that found, found God in the most incredible circumstances. You know, personally, when I had the, you know, my deep encounter with God, it was a very powerful encounter with God, I was in, on the verge of committing suicide. That's how, uh, how lost I was, how empty I felt, and, and uh, with no sense of direction. And, and in the midst of a terrible circumstance in my life, that I thought it was the last day of my life, I was able to find Jesus. And I found God, and I, and I, I felt that God was there, right there with me. And, and with that uh, sense, with that burden, with that feeling, then later I went to a, a church, and in that church, you know, I, I lift up my hand saying, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want a new opportunity. A pastor prayed for me. But the real encounter that I had with God, I was alone in a lonely place wanting to die. So, so that's my, my personal experience of encounter God. Maybe you have another one. And uh, so through life, uh, we'll have these uh, different uh, signs and people and circumstances that happen that will allow us to find God. And let me tell you that according to the Word of God, no one will have an excuse to say before God, I couldn't find you. Mm -hmm. So for each one of us, it's a different path, a different way, but the same destination. And the destination is to find God. Now let's move a little bit further. Now, uh, when Jesus was talking about God's kingdom, he gave the following illustration and this is uh, uh, in the different Gospels. I'm going to leak, uh, read on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 39. It says, Then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch or into a pit? So, so giving this illustration, he was talking about the search, the quest that those people had for God, but they were following the, the wrong teachers. They were following religious people, good people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They, they were different kinds of people that uh, and, uh, and big movements uh, uh, that talk about God during the time in which Jesus was preaching the gospel. And so they, they were trying to find their way and they couldn't. So he gives the illustration. And, and the illustration is that we are like blind people. When we don't have God, we're blind. And if we're blind, we cannot see, right? So a person that doesn't have God in, in their life, they cannot see God. They don't even believe in God, you know, because, because they cannot see God. They're spiritually blind. 
And what happens in this world is that you have other blind people wanting to gu guide blind people in the direction they should go. So this is the illustration. And when we are lost and depressed, we can uh, uh, follow the mistake or uh, doing the mistake of following the wrong guide. And there's all sorts of people trying to take advantage of others. People uh, that say, oh, I talk with the spirits, so I know what's going on in the world. Or others, you know, they, they talk really uh, uh, fancy words and, uh, and, uh, and they, they show that they have their, all their doctor degrees and PhDs and that they put so many letters in front of their name that, you know, we, we don't even understand what the, those letters are. And I'm a doctor in this and a doctor in that. And this is the way of the world. If you see, each time people want to talk about God or religion and you turn on CBC or CNN or Global TV or City TV, they usually put people in front of a microphone talking about God that don't know God. They know God by studying about God, but they don't know Him. You see, because you can have all your degrees in theology and you can know about Him, but you've never met Him. And in order to meet God, it's not by your study, it's not by your degrees, you need to feel your way to God. And when you find God, you find Him in a personal way. And you can find Him here, you can find Him in a Baptist church, you can find Him in a Roman Catholic church, you can find Him with no church, you can find, me, find Him, you know, in so many different ways. But God will place people in your life. And so I'm telling you, it's not by accident that you are here today, and it's not by accident that you're watching this video. It's because God wants you to feel your way to Him, and through someone, and through a group of people that actually already found Him. Now, in, uh, in Acts chapter 17, verse uh, 32, uh, when, when it's the, the same passage that we're reading about, that Paul is, 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 is telling them, you know, God placed people in this world, in a geographical location, in order so you can feel the, the way through God and find Him. And, and then he continued, he talked about Jesus Christ, how He was crucified, how He resurrected on, on the third day, how He ascended to heaven. And as He shared the gospel, and I, I skip now to verse 32, it says, Now when they heard of the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, we will hear again about this. So Paul went out from their midst, but some men joined him and believed. So here we see three different categories of people. The ones that said, oh, resurrection of the dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, so the dead came to life. You know, they started mocking him. You think we're stupid or what, you know. And, and the other, the second category, they said, well, we don't have more time, you know, to give you. You, you came here to our TED Talk or whatever they were having there. It was a talk, they gave, gave him the opportunity, you know, in the, uh, in the public place to, to share what he believed with everybody. He said, okay, uh, you know, later on we'll hear about this. We're, right now we're not interested. You can go. And, and this is the second group of people. Then the third category of people are the ones that believed. And the Bible says they joined Paul. They followed Paul because they wanted to uh, hear some more. They wanted to learn some more. Something touched them and they believed. You know, a, a belief, it's, it's, it's an emotion. It comes, comes out of a, an emotion, of a sense. You know, I believe you. I believe you. You, you know, uh, if a politician comes here and does a speech, he has uh, less probability of being believed than myself. <laughs> because you know that politicians will say all things in order for people to like them. So, so, uh, but, uh, and that's the idea that, that people have. Now, people have an idea about also the things of God and about religion and about organized religion. And, and this idea, it's because some people take advantage of the gospel just to ask money to others. They do, they, they profit of the gospel. And, and so in, in our world we have these things. In, in our community here in Montreal, people use curse words that are religious words. This, this is how mad and upset they are against religion in the, the Catholic Church. They're really upset. That's why, you know, uh, the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, they're selling their cathedrals. And there are plenty of cathedrals for sale and, uh, here in, in Montreal. Why? Because they're empty. 
they cannot afford to maintain them, so they're selling them. But it's such a big city. No, cathedrals and churches are in fact the way how you can find your way to God, but it's not the right way. It's not the way. And I'm going to mention this to you now. We try to find God in places, uh, but in fact, He's not pointing the way through places, but through people. And these people are called messengers. And uh, a messenger from God, in fact, the word messenger uh, in the original languages of the Bible, it's the word, the word angel, angel, an angel of the Lord. So uh, in that sense, a person can be an angel or a messenger of the Lord. And God sent uh, prophets and God uh, keeps sending people. And uh, I, I hope some, uh, uh, some people already told you, oh, you're an angel from God. You're God sent to my life. That's a good thing when someone tells us this. And it's not wrong because God will send people into our life in order to point us in the right direction. Though people go by the millions, they flock and you have pictures there of, of Mecca where people go and you have the Ganges River and the, the Vatican and the other picture is Jerusalem. So people go to different uh, what they call holy places and each one has a favorite one. And if there's not a favorite one, you better be sure that a church or an organization will build something, you know, in the area in order you know, to attract people. Uh, you know, there's plenty of those places also here in our region. If you go on your way to Tadasak, you will see, you know, the cathedrals in the middle of nowhere. And people go there just to ask for a miracle. And, and, and so people will try to find God in places. And you might have an experience. But if you try to go to Jerusalem or to Rome or whatever you choose in order to, to find God, you can have a mystical, a deep spiritual experience. But that will not change your life. Amen. Now, um, it says on Luke 24, talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and again, I'm talking about the resurrection. Some of you may mock. Some, some may say, well, I'll think about this later in my life. And some might believe. So let me talk about a bit, a bit about, about the resurrection. Jesus was crucified. He was placed in the tomb. And some women went, went there. And uh, on verse 1 of Luke 24, it says, On the first day of the week, that was the Sunday, at early dawn they went to the tomb, taking spices they had prepared, and found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But uh, when they went in, they, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them, in dazzling apparel they were really nice suits and it says as they were frightened and bowed their faces to that to the ground the man said to them why do you seek the living among the dead he is not here but he is risen, risen. so so they didn't uh, uh, they could have said you know jesus is not here but they had this peculiar way of you know guiding them to the reality and the reality is that Jesus wasn't dead why do you seek the living among the dead who's the living Jesus he's the giver of life why are you seeking Jesus here on the graveyard he is not here he's risen you know Jesus Christ is the only uh, religious if we can call this figure among all religions, that doesn't have a tomb. Amen. You know, you, you can know where, where's the tomb of Muhammad, of Buddha, Confucius, all these people. You know, the apostles, all these people. But there's no burial ground for Jesus. Amen. Because he is alive. You can give that clap offering to the Lord. So, so as they went there to find Jesus, look once again. They went to a place. They went where? To a place that they, they, they expected to find the body of Jesus. So they went to a place. And after this, you know, they were so excited. They, they said, we have to tell someone, you know. And a, a, a second thing I want to tell is when you feel your way to God, you feel this urge to share your discovery with others. You know, that's why sometimes Christians are so annoying. <laughs> because we take the opportunity... You know, on an airplane, on the bus, you know, on the bus stop. And we share about Jesus. And we should share about Jesus. Because we found Him. 
We're not blind anymore. We found Jesus. He is our Savior. And now we want to share it. But guess what? The, the history repeats. As they went to the disciples, the same uh, uh, chapter of the Bible says that they told these things and they were Mary Magdalene, uh, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women who told these things to the apostles. And it says, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Now, uh, next verse says, But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, uh, st uh, stooping and looking in, and he saw the linen clothes in themselves, and we, he went home marveling at what uh, had happened. So once again, here we see they're announcing, we found Jesus. We had an encounter with Jesus, and they did not believe. Yeah. Some they mocked, some they said, well, this is a, a, fairy, a fairy tale. So we see the, these different reactions. Uh, some consider a fairy tale, but at least one decided to go there and investigate. And once again, he went in the wrong direction because he went to the tomb, mm. the place where the women said he's not there. Amen. But he, he still wanted to go to the place. You see how stubborn human nature is? We, we try to find God in, in places, in buildings. In cathedrals. That's why some people, you know, they even feel offended if we're preaching the gospel in a movie theater. Because they say, oh, no, no. God has to be in a building, in a church. If you're going to talk about God, you need to have a church. You need to have a building, you know, with a cross. You know, where's the cross? They, they come, where's the cross? Where are the saints in the wall? You know, uh, I want to find God. And some people will just bow down to the, uh, an image of Mary or an image of Jesus because they want to find God in what they see. But the invisible God does not dwell in temples that are built by the, the hands of man. He, he actually lives in people. He said, I will abide in their midst and, that, and, and, and I will be their God. So he wants to live in people. So you find God through people. But people are so stubborn. Jesus continues to appear to the disciples. And, and, you know, later on, the same chapter, they were talking about these things. And Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. But they were startled and frightened. They thought they saw a spirit. They couldn't believe it. And Jesus had to say, No, touch me. Come here. You know, see, I'm not a spirit. He even said, Okay, you don't believe me. Bring some food. And he was uh, uh, eating with them because, you know, a spirit doesn't eat. You know, they're transparent, can we, we will see, you know, the, you know, the, you know <laughs> things being digested, or I don't know. <laughs> but he wanted to prove them, you know, I want to give you the proof, so he, he sat down, and if you read the Bible, he was eating, and they were looking at him, they were not eating with him, they were just watching, you know, what's going on? And they finally s s said, it's Jesus. Now, one of them wasn't there, <laughs> and he said, oh, I don't believe you. And finally, Jesus uh, uh, rebuked him. And then he said, blessed are those that without seeing will believe me. Amen. And, and many of us here, uh, you know, maybe you, you never had a vision of Jesus, but you still believe. I was blessed when I started following the Lord. I had a vision of Jesus. I don't know if he was there, if, if it was something that I just saw. It wasn't an imagination. I really had an encounter with the Lord. And, and that changed also my life. But uh, maybe it was because of my unbelief. So I was already in the right direction, but God had to give me a push. So I'm here to tell you that Jesus continues to reveal himself in different ways. And some people will see Jesus on the clouds. I had testimonies of people that said, oh, I, I saw Jesus on a cloud. Uh, some, they even say that they saw Jesus or the face of Jesus on a toast, it came out of a toaster. <laughs> And then they go sell it on eBay or something, just making fun of this. But, but, uh, but some people will see Jesus in, in everything, you know. Oh, I, I saw Jesus, I saw Jesus. And, and, we, and sometimes we label those people as crazy people. Oh, this is a lunatic. This, look at this person. He sees Jesus everywhere. But you see, our encounter with Jesus is personal. You have one, I have another. But there's a way to find him. And he himself uh, told this in... Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he said, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Amen. So ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. This is what Jesus said. 
Jesus said, if you keep asking, if you keep looking for, and you keep, you keep knocking, I, I interpret knocking as praying, you know, so, so you will find God. And this has to come from each one of us individually, because God will reveal himself to us in a very personal way. Let me give you just this example. Imagine that we were people living on a piece of paper, on a flat piece of paper. And if people were living in a flat piece of paper, they could see each other, but they couldn't see anything out of the piece of paper. Because they will live in a dimension, they were completely blind to the third dimension. Are you following me? This is just a, 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 an imagination. So imagine that this, these two people were just talking to each other and God wanted to reveal himself to these people. God just had to come with his finger and touch, just touch that piece of paper. So, the, and if God touched that piece of paper, finally, they will be able to see something at the level that they can understand. Now we live in a world that we consider a world, a world with three dimensions or four, and now scientists are coming to the conclusion we have 10 or 11 dimensions, and they are, they're all you know, doing mathematical equations uh, and, and calculus to, to explain all the dimensions. We only see three plus times, so that's our fourth dimension. But God lives in another dimension. But he came and God's finger touched our world to reveal the person of Jesus Christ. And you can know the historical Jesus Christ, but you might not have the opportunity to have an encounter with him. Let me tell you this story about this man that on winter time uh, started to see, uh, it was a very cold day and birds were just coming against the, the windows to try to uh, find some warmth in the house. They couldn't come to the house. So as he had a barn and animals there, he thought, well, if I just open the doors and the windows of the barn and I call the birds, the birds can be saved by uh, uh, freezing and dying in the cold of, of the winter. So he opened the doors of the barn and started to call the birds, but the birds were frightened. They were seeing that man over there. And he, he was seeing the birds dying freezing and he was also freezing and inviting them to come into the barn he just had the thought that the only way to call those birds was if he was a bird himself and you know this is exactly what god did for us Amen. god the creator he was born as a human as a person to point us in the right direction and let me tell you when you have god in your life if god is for us who can be against us. Amen. So when you have this encounter with God, all your life will change. You need to feel your way to God. So let me tell you, it's not by accident that you are here. Jesus indeed died, but he ascended to heaven. And from heaven, he appointed this day. This is your day to receive Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior. And you just have to do a simple prayer, inviting him to come into your life. And as you give this step, you know, the Bible says, when you approach God, you give one step in His direction, He gives two in your direction. He, he, he suddenly is closer. He's closer than what you think. You know, when movies start in this theater, they put an ad and they say, you're richer than you think. They put that ad in all, in all movies now. It's an ad for a bank saying, you're richer than what you think. And in, in, in fact, maybe we are. I don't know. But let me tell you, the ad today, it's... God is closer than what you think. Amen. Maybe you're going through those hard times in life and you think, why is this happening to me? Because God allowed that circumstance to come so you could seek Him. So you could seek Him. So you can start knocking. So you can start asking, God, where are you? So He made uh, from every man, mankind, nations, so that perhaps we will feel our way toward Him and find Him. And today, I want to close this meeting by inviting you to have an encounter with Jesus. You know, it's, it's not the place. It's not the location. It's not where you are. But you came here not to, to listen just to a, to a simple man. I'm just a simple person, just like you. But I know the power of God is here. And you know what happens when we pray? God answers. Amen. So that's why we can see miracles happening. We see, you know, people being healed, people being transformed. Difficult circumstances in your life can change like this. When you, you're in the presence of God, when you feel your way toward Him, you pray. And then God will surprise is about to happen. Amen. So let me just do this invitation. I want to invite you to have a close encounter 
with God, to have an encounter with your Creator. Now, like now, to invite you to stand if you can, if you want to remain seated, uh, just remain seated. But I like to guide you in a simple prayer, and it's a prayer of invitation. I would like to invite you, you know, to come into God's arms, and just as you, as you remain in God's arms that you can just do a simple prayer and believe me that whatever you asking from God he is here to listen so just bow your heads or you can close your eyes or leave your eyes open it's up with you but just repeat after me dear God, dear God, dear God I ask for your forgiveness, I ask for your forgiveness. because I was away from you I even mocked other people that believed in God I rejected others I tried to find you in the wrong places, but today I'm asking you, just receive me in your arms, forgive me of my sins, and listen to my prayers. I, I accept Jesus Christ as my God, as my Lord, as my Savior, and I surrender my life to Him. And God, as I approach you, I believe that you will listen to my requests, to my intercession, to my prayer. And you know my life, and I ask you, God, to come and visit me. Change my life. Change the circumstances of my life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.